Math with AF Math and Engineering. If you're enjoying this video and our channel, make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe button down below because we're always releasing new videos and new content for engineering students. Enjoy the video. Hey everyone, welcome back. Fred here from AF Math and Engineering. This is going to be a different type of video that we're normally doing on this channel, but uh, if you guys enjoy it and uh, you think it's a good idea, if you leave some comments down below and let me know, um, we'll do some more. And uh, basically the idea behind these videos is that we're going to do look over some past exams. So we're going to look at a bunch of different types of civil engineering exams and we're just going to talk about them. We're not going to solve them. And um, I thought this might be interesting, you know, for other civil engineering students who want to kind of compare what they did in their class to what uh, we do over here in Canada, Canadian University. Um, or maybe for someone who's interested in going into civil engineering, um, who wants to take a look at what, what kind of, you know, tests uh, they'll be taking. So uh, that's kind of the idea. So you know what, before this video starts, please let me know in the comments down below. Let me know if you like the idea. Let me know if you want to see any other specific courses and you know, if you want to see more like this. So, all right, so let's take a look. So this is an uh, exam um, that is that I took in the third year in the second half of the third year. So the sixth semester. And um, it's a structural concrete design exam. So this was the midterm. And a little bit of background on this course. Like I said, this is a third year course, structural concrete design. Um, before this, we took a course that um, dealt kind of like, was like an introduction to, um, to concrete design. So we did some really basic concrete design stuff, um, but nothing uh, really like this course. So this course uh, dealt mainly with uh, one-way slabs, uh, design of beams, column design, concrete column design, and, uh, you know, reinforcement, uh, embedment lengths, development lengths of bars, that kind of stuff. And the course after the structural concrete too dealt with two-way slabs, torsion, deep beams, some more uh, advanced concrete topics. So, um, yeah, let's just go through this exam. I'm going to kind of walk you through what uh, this exam would look like and some of the tricks because actually <laughs> this exam, the uh, the average was fairly low. So I just want to walk you through just a couple of the tricks that people messed up on and uh, we'll maybe draw some sketches and that kind of stuff. Yeah, we were given two hours to finish this exam. Some of the notes that were given for this um, are just the really basic stuff. State your assumptions. You know, stating our, our assumptions are always important, uh, especially in design questions, okay? Because um, if you're stuck, you state your assumption, you continue, and, you know, hopefully you get some par partial marks based on that. Um, you know, we're given the compressive strength of the concrete, yield strength of the rebar, normal density concrete, exposure, bars are uncoated. That's going to be important for the last part. Clear cover, and, uh, you know, they give you the flex roll and the stirrups, and uh, the design code. Cool. So, you know, not so bad. Um, but actually this exam was pretty tough. So let's, uh, let's take a look at the first, uh, the first question. There's only actually one question. So let's take a look at that one. Um, a three span continuous beam supports 150 millimeter thick one way slab, which spans five meters center to center. So as we can see, this is the five meter center to center in this drawing down here. So it's always important to look at the drawing and the beams have clear spans. This is the first trick face to face of square columns. So the, the clear spans down here, okay, are the nine meter and the 10 meter. And those are face to face of the columns, uh, to the, of the beams. And a lot of people thought that, that was center to center. They didn't read the, this word clear span. Okay, so um, that's one thing that we're going to take a look at. The columns are 350 by 350. Uh, slab supports a uniform, and we're given the SDL. We're given the live load. It also says that we need to find the self weight. So um, first of all, it's going to ask us to determine the minimum depth of the beams required to meet the code minimum requirements. And this is one difference between, I think you'll find in the later years of civil engineering and the earlier ones. In the earlier engineering classes, especially in civil, you were working with like, you know, stresses and strains and uh, internal stresses, like strengths of materials type stuff. And then when you get into the later years, it, start, it starts to kind of get into more of like a code based uh, program. So you're designing everything according to the building code according to the national uh, concrete code, steel code, and you're not, and, and, and a lot of the courses are actually based on this. So that's kind of where this degree goes. And um, I just wanted to show you before we continue this cheat sheet that we were allowed to use. So in this class, we were actually allowed to use a double-sided cheat sheet. And, you know, I tried to fit as much stuff on here as you can see. And um, it was really important to kind of go to the lectures and listen and figure out what was going to be on the test. Because when, when we're designing based on the code, there's a lot of tables and coefficients in the code and clauses that we need to include in case they get asked. And this is one of them. So it's asking us to um, find the minimum depth of the beam. So if we go to the code here, okay, in the code we have a table here. And this is a table that we can use for the minimum thickness required of the code uh, for a beam based on different uh, conditions. And, um, you know, at the start here, uh, we have a, and if we have the beam here, so one end is continuous, so this is going to be ln over 18, 
right? And LN over 21 for the middle span. So those are kind of uh, coefficients that you needed to have in your cheat sheet. If you didn't know that that was coming, and this is another reason why this test was hard, is because a lot of people didn't know um, that this was the case. And as a result of this, they kind of didn't know what the minimum depth of the beam was. And you'll see actually in the later questions, there's even more stuff like that. So um, that's the first step. Um, B, uh, assuming that the beams have a width of B equals 350 and a total depth of H equals 650, and that includes the slab, determine the factored load. So this, so this was actually kind of tricky, and maybe we can draw a sketch here. So um, as you can see, so the beams have a width of 350. So let's draw the beam first, right? So we have the beams of 350 de uh, width here. Okay, the 650 includes the slab. And there's our slab there. Okay, and let's just assume that the slab is kind of three dimensional here. And uh, the total depth, including the slab, is 650. Okay, so uh, that's good. And the slab is 150. Okay. So we have this load um, that we want to find on the beam here. We want this. We want to turn this into a linear load, and we have a dist distributed load across the top of the slab. Uh, pressure, uh, which is given 2. Point SDL equals 2.4 kPa, and our live load is equal to 6 kPa. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to turn these two loads into a kind of a distributed load along this beam so that we have the linear load that we can design. So in that case, we need to find the tributary area of the beam. So in this case, um, the, the tributary area of the beam is just five meters on both sides, right? Because we're kind of taking a section like this. So we're cutting a section like this, and we know that this interior beam to be designed uh, is, you know, five meters center to center here. So that's important, center to center. So uh, the self-weight is this concrete here. We know that this is all concrete, right? And we know we have gamma C, which is 24 kilonewton per meters cubed. And we know that this distance is just 650 minus 150, right? So we can just uh, find the weight of this. So we have 10 meters. Okay, we have 10 meters. Okay, so we just, we're just going to have, you know, 10 meters times 150 plus 350 times 650 minus 150, that's going to be 500, times 24, and that's going to be our self-weight. We're going to add it to these, about, so we have our SDL here, so our, our we're going to have 2.4 times the tributary, which is 10, and then we're going to have 6 times 10, okay? And those are going to be our linear loads, and then we're going to factor them. So for our, our dead load and our dead self-weight, we're going to use 1.25. And for our live load, we're going to use a factor of 1.5. So that was a really kind of tricky part of getting the loads correct. And a lot of people made a mistake there, and they kind of uh, they got a bad mark. So um, that was that question. Let's uh, let's check the next one. So we're asked to de determine the design and the moment coefficients for this beam. Now, the tricky thing about it is we have this table here. And this table, uh, first we, we need to check if our, if our slab um, satisfies the direct design method. And there's a bunch of... Um, kind of clauses in the code. Once we find that our continuous beam uh, meets these requirements, we can use these coefficients at different points in the continuous beam in order to approximate the moment uh, based on kind of a conservative quick estimate. And um, that's uh, something that you needed to do in this question. Uh, you needed to have that on your cheat sheet. See, I had mine right here. That's, there it is. But a lot of people didn't, and you know, they got it wrong. So. Um, that's how you could uh, really quickly draw the bending moment diagram for this whole beam here, this continuous beam, without having to solve it using structural analysis, because as we know, it's indeterminate. Okay, so um, let's just go through the last ones pretty quickly. I think you're kind of getting an idea of, you know, what this, uh, the level of difficulty this uh, exam holds. And, you know, assuming the beams are designed as rectangular beams, determine the maximum, the minimum amount of positive and negative reinforcement. Use H equals 650 and use the details in the beam. Assume all the bars fit in one layer. I do remember this, and it ended up being something kind of ridiculous where you had like 21 bars in one layer because they told you to use 20, 25 amps. Um, but actually, the, the trick here, another trick that a lot of people got wrong, that when you check the strain distribution, you'll found, found that there's too much steel here uh, based on the minimum requirement, and it hasn't yielded. So at that point, you need to redesign it as a doubly reinforced beam, and a lot of people didn't do that. That was incorrect. Next, we're going to uh, check if the beam's cross-section is required, uh, to, is adequate. So um, that's pretty simple. I think you guys should know this if you've done like second year university. 
that's just um, you know our VC formula. Yeah, you're gonna do your shear design. You're gonna have your shear here, and we're gonna look look into the kind of DV from the face of the support. Okay, and we have a zone here with no stirrups because that's VC, and then we have V at DV, VF at DV. You know um, that kind of stuff. So that's um, stuff that we're learning in this course. Finally, uh, and we're asked about the development length. So the development length essentially is when we have when we're developing bars. For example, like this. This is our column. Okay, we need to find out maybe the development length either of a hooked or a straight bar, and uh, that's also in the code. I don't know if you can see it here, but we have some requirements in the code, and I'm not going to go over that. I wanted to show you guys kind of uh, walk you through an exam. Uh, you know, let me know if you like this kind of video. It's just an idea. Um, let me know if this you think this was a hard exam, if this was an easy exam for you based on what you did in school, or if you're new to civil engineering, if you think you know this is interesting. Thanks a lot, guys. Let me know in the comments down below, and take care.